Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. So today I'm doing a request video, it's my first ever one. Um, it's a request that came from Twitter asking me to talk to you guys about writing historical fiction. So in this video I'm going to give you five tips that I've picked up from university professors and also just from writing my first ever historical fiction novel um, that will hopefully help you guys if you're looking to venture into historical fiction or if perhaps you're a bit nervous about starting to write historical fiction, maybe this can at least kind of put you at ease or just give you a good framework to work towards when writing. So here we go. Tip number one, make sure that you're writing in a time period that fascinates you. Now, fascinates might seem a bit strong, but it really is so important because when you, first of all, when you're writing a whole book, it should be about a topic that really interests you anyway, that goes without saying. But the thing is, when you're writing historical fiction, you are going to have to do so much reading and research. But if it's only a time period that you're vaguely interested in, or perhaps you read one short story that kind of caught your imagination and you thought, yeah, that's cool, I'd like to write in that time period, you're gonna kind of write yourself into a hole. So if, for example, you kind of just fancy the idea of writing in Victorian England, for example, but really the only reason you like that is because you like the idea of writing a book that involves wearing corsets and pretty dresses. That's not a good enough reason because when you're actually looking into the nitty gritty and just trying to write even everyday parts of your novel, you're going to end up writing yourself into a hole and it'll be really difficult to sound convincing and if you're someone that's going to get sick of having to like read through all that historical material then I can't really help you I'm afraid. Tip number two is attention to detail. Now unlike readers of contemporary fiction you're going to find that historical fiction readers are very nitpicky about the details. If you're going to be talking about the type of dress worn in Victorian England as well main characters getting changed you need to get that right because if you miss out on important detail like the corsetry or something or the wearing of a garter trust me when I say that people will pick up on that so make sure that you do your research and just really go through your manuscript with a fine toothed comb to make sure that you don't have any anachronisms or inconsistencies because really believe me that that's the kind of thing that readers will get very annoyed with you about and don't have very much tolerance for. So for example, if you're writing a book set in 1920s England and your main character is happily driving along a motorway, that's a problem. Motorways weren't even, well the very first motorway in England wasn't even completed until 1959. So these are the kind of things that you need to really keep an eye out for. I mean, imagine in that situation for example, you probably were just thinking my character's going to be trying to drive quickly down a road and it didn't occur to you perhaps that that road might not exist. Those kind of really small details that you just don't have to worry about when writing contemporary fiction are crucial in historical fiction. And I don't want to say that to put people off writing historical fiction because it's those little details that can give such richness to your writing and it's one of the main reasons that I actually love writing historical fiction. It's just a case of being sure that when you're going through your manuscript after you've written it that you do so with a fine tooth comb and make sure that you really look out for anachronisms. Tip number three. Make sure that you read in your time period and genre. Things like dialogue, the style of dress, the architecture, everything is going to be different in a different time period. Even 10 years ago, the world that we live in today was a little bit different. And if you're writing even just as recently as the 1990s, you need to make sure that you're getting that right. And the best way to do that, if you haven't lived through those time periods, is to make sure that you're reading a lot in that area. So for example, if you're really interested in the Tudor period, make sure that you're reading a lot of um, Alison Weir and Philippa Gregory, who are two brilliant historical fiction writers, and they can help give you an idea for the kind of tone that you want in your own book. It's really important that you have a good grasp of the time period that you're writing in, because really what you're doing if you're writing historical fiction is the time itself is almost a character. You need to illustrate it really well you need to make sure that it's convincing because it's going to add an entirely different tint on your entire novel also it's not enough simply to watch period dramas and think that perhaps you've got a good enough grasp of the time period because they are full of anachronisms even the bbc ones are great the number of times i've seen zips in period dresses or Keira knightley in pride and prejudice not wearing her bonnet at appropriate times i am one of those people that gets annoyed about those kinds of things it's also worth noting that just because one protagonist says or does something does not mean that that's necessarily the rule that follows for the time period. So actually sticking with Pride and Prejudice, although Elizabeth Bennet was particularly sassy and ended up marrying way out of her social hierarchy, for the time period that was really unusual. So it's making sure that whilst you're writing fiction and you're allowed to stray from the norms, that you do know what those norms are. It's kind of a case of you can't really break a rule unless you know the rule. And when it's history, there are a lot of rules that you've got to follow. 
Tip number four is not to include everything you know about the time period. So perhaps you are somebody that really enjoys, like me, doing lots of research and reading around the time periods. That's great, but that doesn't mean that you need to include every little detail that you find and include it into your novel. So for example, for my book, I had to do some research on um, equipment that would have been belonged in a, in a kitchen below the stairs. And just because I found out the invention dates of the washing machine and, you know, those kinds of things, it didn't mean that I had to fit them all into my book. And in fact, although it was useful to have that information in my arsenal, I didn't even end up including that detail. It's just important to make sure that any of the details that you want to include actually belong there and are contributing to the story. It needs to help paint a picture. So, for example, in my novel, I've got my main character complaining at one point because the girdle that she's wearing feels too tight, and her mother says that she shouldn't be complaining because at least she doesn't have to wear a corset. Now what that's done is it's told me quite a lot, or it's told the reader quite a lot about the two different characters. We know that the one young woman is complaining because she feels like it's uncomfortable, because that's the realm of her experience. She's never really had to wear a corset. Whereas her mother, who grew up in the Edwardian era, was used to wearing corsets and that was her norm. So the idea of a girdle, which was a lot lighter and less restrictive, would have seemed, you know, great to her so she wouldn't get why her daughter was complaining. The point is that that inclusion of that detail is a nice little nugget for my readers who want to know these kinds of things, but also it tells you something about the character and it helps to progress the story. And my last tip, tip number five, is that not to forget that you are still writing fiction. I kind of said before that you need to know the rules before you break them, and what I mean by that is that you can be free to play with it a little bit. Like I've got one story idea in which my character is going to be going into a different time period and that means that obviously she's going to be experiencing two different time periods and it's going to mesh together and it's all going to get a bit messy but realistically we don't have time travellers and that's not really a thing. Just because you're writing historical fiction doesn't mean that every single thing you write has to be 100% accurate. Alright, maybe for a best-selling author there are going to be a handful of people that get annoyed about the fact that you're completely and utterly historically inaccurate by having somebody time travel but look, at the end of the day you've just got to write the story you have to write. But the main thing is that you do your research, that you're really paying attention to detail, and that you're staying true to your own narrative. I think historical fiction is an incredibly fun genre to, to read and to write. I love learning about previous time periods, and I love the interpretation that authors have on those time periods. At the end of the day, what you're trying to do is entertain people. If you're writing fiction, don't forget to have fun. So that's all I've got for you guys this week. I hope you found it interesting. And if you're writing your own historical fiction, please do write something in the comments about your book. I'd love to know what you're doing and what time period you're in and we can geek out about history. <laughs> and don't forget to like and subscribe if you did enjoy. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.